Hello universe, my name is Kati and welcome to my very sick adventure. And just to clarify, I don't mean sick as in cool, I mean sick as in like, I'm actually probably dying. So please excuse my voice, but I really wanted to make a video so I could have something to post this week. So by the title, I'm pretty sure you can guess what I'm going to be doing in this video. I never really thought I would film a tattoo tag just because I think it's really basic and kind of boring. But now that I think about it, the reason I probably think that is because the only tattoo tour videos I've seen are all by really basic white girls. So hi, I'm another basic white girl. <laughs> so let's just go ahead and get started. My very first tattoo was this little sun on my wrist. I got it just a couple days after my 18th birthday. It's kind of funny that I ended up with so many tattoos because when I was little, I was really against them. You know how when you're younger, you gotta make these extreme expectations for your future self? I'm not gonna drink, I'm not gonna do drugs, I'm not gonna get tattoos, I'm never gonna pierce my face, I won't have sex before marriage, it definitely won't ever come out of the closet. Let me see how well those turned out. I mean, nowadays, the only expectations I have for my future self are kind of like, I mean, I guess I probably wouldn't do heroin. So anyways, a couple days after my 18th birthday, I was driving around the city with one of my friends, and he just looked over at me and was like, Dude, you just turned 18, let's go get you a tattoo. And I was like, eh, I don't know, tattoos are a really big commitment, I can't even stay in a relationship for longer than a month. Um, okay. So we looked up the closest tattoo parlor with decent reviews, and we went. Figured I'd walk in, be there for a little bit, and leave with some new ink. I soon found out there were a couple problems with my plan when the artist asked me what I wanted to get, and I realized I had no f***ing clue. I had had a couple tattoo ideas in mind beforehand, but I kind of just panicked and ended up telling him I wanted shapes, so that's exactly what I got. In all honesty, my first couple tattoos really aren't that interesting, so I'm just gonna go through them really quickly. I have this Picasso line drawing on my arm, literally no fucking reason behind it at all. I have these sea turtles on my hip because I love the ocean. I have a little Ganesha on my ankle, which if you guys didn't know, oh my god, I just, oh f I almost fell off my stool. If you guys didn't know that Ganesha is a god in Hinduism and Buddhism, he's a remover of obstacles and symbolizes wisdom. I started studying and practicing Buddhism when I was 15 or 16 at a really, really low time in my life. It really changed the way I viewed the world, so I'm super, super thankful for Buddhism. I also have this line drawing of a lotus because while getting a different tattoo, my artist told me I could have another one for free and I didn't know what I was going to get, so I panicked and just chose this. Okay, so now that we got past the first couple basic and boring ones, I'm gonna go ahead and start on my sleeve. Obviously, it's not done yet. I still need to get my shoulder piece. It's pretty much just a bunch of different ocean things. Anyone who knows me will tell you I love the ocean more than anything. It was the first thing I ever fell in love with and will probably always be the only thing that can fully cleanse and heal my soul. I know that sounded really cliche and hippie-like, but I love the ocean so much. Um, I don't know what it is, but being around water just makes everything okay for me. So anyways, the very first tattoo I got to start off my sleeve was this right here. It's a conch shell. I actually wasn't ever planning to get a sleeve. My artist at the time noticed I had an interest in really simple line work, and that was something he didn't have a lot of practice in. So one night he came to me and asked if he designed me tattoos, would I be okay with him tattooing them on me? for free or cheap so that he could build up his portfolio. Of course, I said yes, and this was the very first one he designed. The next one was this whale. I actually didn't like it too much when I first got it, but it's kind of grown on me. Then I have like seashells and waves and bubbles just to kind of fill in the free spaces. I have this eel right here and I really like it because if I move my arm like this, it kind of looks like it's swimming. <laughs> Anyways, then I have this little dude. His name is Sebastian. He's actually an emperor angelfish. I actually saw this type of fish while I was snorkeling in Mexico and the colors were so beautiful and vibrant that I totally fell in love. I have this jellyfish back here and then a seahorse on my elbow. This tattoo is pretty special to me. If you notice, it's kind of in the shape of a human heart, but it's just a bunch of sea creatures. A drunk girl actually sent it to me over Snapchat one night. She just messaged me one night and was like, hey, I know we don't really know each other, but I've noticed you love the ocean and I found this design. I'm drunk and decided I'd send it to you, so here you go. And I liked it so much, I ended up getting it and it covers up some self-harm scars that I had from the past. So. It's pretty important to me. On the back of my arm, I have a mermaid, and then on the inner part, I have this anchor. I asked my artist if he could make the theme of it nautical because my grandpa was in the Navy. If you've watched my other videos, you'll know that I was really close to my grandpa, and he passed away just this past year. So I got this tattoo in sort of a remembrance of him. I actually got it a couple years before he died. Um, he ended up getting really, really sick, and my whole family thought we were going to lose him. But he ended up pushing through and surviving another couple years, so... I ended up getting to show him the tattoo anyways, which was kind of cool. However, since he did have dementia, his reaction to the tattoo would change every time I'd show it to him. I think the first time I showed it, he cried. The second time I showed him, he slapped me across the head and called me an idiot for getting that much ink on my body. I love my grandpa. So yeah, that's pretty much my whole sleeve. There's not a bunch of deep meaning behind every single tattoo. There's more meaning in the sleeve itself. Like I said, I just really, really love the ocean, so I... 
got it on my body. Okay, so on to my right arm. This is kind of my f**k it arm. Um, I get tattoos from places that I've traveled to. I think it's kind of a cool way to remember certain events or places that I've gone to. The very first start to my collection is this little dude with an afro riding a dolphin playing a flute. <laughs> I got it with my friend Kylie the very first time I ever went to Arizona. I'd actually shown the artist kind of a different version of this tattoo, and she got really excited and was like, oh my god, can I change this and make it better and I was like yeah sure so she added the short shorts abs the flute the music note and of course the afro and I think that it's the most perfect tattoo for me ever <laughs> it makes absolutely no sense yet it describes my personality perfectly <laughs> these next two tattoos I got again in Arizona I've actually got over half of the tattoos on this arm with my friend Kylie so these are my kind of Halloween themed tattoos then the day after Halloween Kylie and I decided to take a road trip to California and we got these matching gay Mickeys at like 2 o'clock in the morning on Hollywood Boulevard. This was probably one of my most interesting tattoo experiences considering there was a prostitute getting her pimp's name tattooed on her neck right next to us. Yeah, that was fun. The reasoning behind this tattoo is literally one of the dumbest things ever. Kylie and I wanted to take a little aesthetic picture when we went to Disneyland the next day, so we decided to get this. Picture turned out good though, so I mean, at least there's that. And then on the back, I have a Ferris wheel. Um, I got this one when I was in Vegas last year. If you guys didn't know, there's a really big Ferris wheel in Vegas called the High Roller. It's actually the highest Ferris wheel in the United States. I think there's one or two taller ones somewhere else in the world. But yeah, it was really scary. I wasn't a huge fan of riding it. Not because I'm afraid of heights or anything. I just don't like being in tight, enclosed spaces. So imagine being claustrophobic, stuck in a little pod, like a couple hundred feet in the air. It's just not the ideal situation for me. But I got the tattoo anyways, so that's the story behind that one. The last one I have on this arm is this little dinosaur that says, it's okay. So I worked at a tattoo shop as the piercer and Whenever we got bored or it was slow, we would tattoo each other. I actually have a couple tattoos I got during slow days. Um, I have this knife on my collarbone. I got a conch shell right here, and I'll tell you the story behind that one later, but I got it during a slow day at the tattoo shop. I have rainbow dots on my fingers. They're super faded, though. And then I have 626 on my foot. Yeah, all of these tattoos I got while working at the tattoo shop. The number 626 on my foot stand for, obviously, Stitch. In the movie Lilo and Stitch, Stitch's alien number was experiment 626 and growing up that was a big joke around my house I don't know why but my dad would always say 626 in a really funny voice and it always make me laugh my very first car its license plate ended in 626 it's just super weird how the numbers have always followed me around so I went ahead and, and got them tattooed on me I've covered all the tattoos on my arms I do have this really dumb tattoo I really don't like it and I really don't like sharing it with people the story behind it is really stupid and just proves how much of a dumb bitch I am. A couple years ago, I was in a really rough spot. I was constantly partying and f***ed up on some type of substance. Rarely was I ever sober, and this went on for about a month and a half. One day, after like a three day long binge, I'm sitting in my bed on Tumblr, and I see this design. So immediately, I sent my tattoo artist the design and asked if he could do it and made an appointment for the very next day. I ended up getting it and I'm really ashamed that I did because it's such a basic and overused idea. Not to mention, it's not original and it's just so f***ing stupid. So one day I might get it covered up. Um, with what? I have no idea yet, but that's a long ways down the road. Moral of the story is don't make tattoo decisions during a come down. So I told you about the knife on my collarbone, but I didn't explain the alien. Again, if you've watched my other videos, you'll know that I have a best friend named Sebastian. Him and I have been friends for like seven or eight years now, and during our fifth friend anniversary, he came down and visited me in Texas. He had just turned 18, so we decided to go get matching tattoos. However, they aren't exactly alike. His is actually colored in green and has a peace sign on the forehead, and then mine is just plain, but yeah, those are kind of our matching friendship tattoos for our 10 year anniversary. We're probably gonna get another tattoo. I have no idea what it's gonna be, but I'm sure it'll be something weird. Oh, and if you didn't put it together, the little fish named Sebastian on my arm is also named after Sebastian. So moving down my body, I have on my right side the conch shell I was talking about earlier, and then I also have a sand dollar. Now, the story behind these tattoos is kind of weird. I had a best friend a couple years ago. 
She was my entire world. It was almost as if we were married, but it was completely platonic. We did everything together and we had even planned a life together. We wanted to save up money and buy an RV and just kind of travel the world together. And what we wanted to do for every place that had an impact on us, we wanted to tattoo a little something to symbolize wherever we went. One day we took a road trip to the beach and that's actually where we decided that we wanted to do the RV thing. So we got the little sand dollars as a symbol for the start of a new life. That friendship became really manipulative and toxic and I kind of had to get out of it. So obviously we never followed our dream with the RV and even though we don't talk and I really don't know where or what she's doing, I still have all the love and appreciation in my heart for her. I hope she's doing amazing and I'm always going to love the friendship and bond we had. So I don't know if she covered up her tattoo, but I'm always gonna keep mine. We kind of wanted to do it as like an under boob piece. So just with every place we went to, it continue to go. So yeah, I ended up continuing it this past year and I got this conch shell as a symbol for my trip to the Bahamas. So yeah, there's a little sentimental symbolic tattoo story for you. Oh, by the way, I forgot I have two tattoos on my neck. One kind of behind my ear. It says beautiful mind. One of my favorite artists of all time is John Bellion. Um, his kind of trademark is beautiful mind. Through the years in all of his songs, he'll always somehow incorporate the words beautiful mind in it. I think it's really, really cool how he kind of kept up that consistency even as his music grew. And it also helps me remind myself to keep a beautiful mind no matter what. There can be a lot of hate and negativity in the world, but as long as you keep a beautiful mind, you can kind of do anything. I don't know, it's sort of lame, but that's the way I see it. A couple of years ago, I actually met him and I got to show him the tattoo on my neck. It was insane. <laughs> and the other one I have on my neck is Baby Girl. I'm sure you can figure out why I got that one. I just got hot Cheeto dust in my nose. Do you remember those kids that used to snort hot Cheeto dust at the lunch table? I always wonder if they do coke now. These next two tattoos are the last ones I'm gonna show you and they're actually my most painful ones. I have this beautiful piece on my my left side of a fish and an anemone. But two or three years ago while I was snorkeling in Mexico, I jumped in the water and saw this type of fish first thing. An entire school of them kind of stuck around me and I thought it was really cool. So that's where that part of the tattoo comes from. The other part comes from me being too curious and deciding to put my hands in places that they shouldn't be and getting stung by an anemone. Spoiler alert, it f***ing hurt. But it gave me a great backstory to this tattoo and I ended up getting it. Now I did get this tattoo while I was in Mexico. I went to some random little parlor and told the guy what I wanted. He barely spoke English and me being the white person I am, I barely spoke Spanish. Why did I just say barely? I'm white as shit. I don't speak f***ing Spanish. Spanish at all. So we had to communicate through like pictures and head nods. It was a really interesting experience. Like I said, one of the most painful tattoos I've ever gotten. If you're thinking about getting a tattoo on your ribs, prepare yourself. I remember when I left there, I had bruises on my arm from like grabbing onto it so hard, trying not to cry. It was so painful, but it was totally worth it because I think the tattoo is one of the most beautiful ones I have. This very last one is on my ankle. It's actually the most painful tattoo I've ever gotten. I kind of gave the artist free range. I told him I wanted watercolor, that I like to travel, and I love the ocean. Any decision made from there on was all up to him. Something cool about it is that it has black light ink in it, so under a black light it will glow. I think that's kind of dope. I mean, it's a pretty cool tattoo. I just don't like the memories associated with it. Everybody always compliments me on it though, so whatever, I guess. Well, I'm pretty sure that that is it. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed watching and that you found some of my stories, if not interesting, at least a little entertaining. Not a lot of my tattoos have some deep type of meaning behind it. I don't think every single tattoo you put on your body has to have meaning. Some people have different views and that's okay, but me personally, I like to just live in the moment and get whatever I want. I will say though that I've got a lot of compliments on majority of all my tattoos, so I'm grateful for that. I do like almost every single one of them and only regret one. <laughs> in the comments below, tell me what tattoos you have, and if you don't have any, let me know what you want to get for your first tattoo. Whatever you do, make sure you actually plan it out so that you don't just panic and pick the first thing that comes to your head like I did. Like I always say, if you'd like to follow my journey, please click the subscribe button, and if you'd like to follow my other adventures, I'll put my social media links in the description below. Sorry again about my voice, but hug your mom, hug your pet, and until my next video, remember that the universe is on your side. So like daylight do They say I'm new Nothing but some deja vu Everywhere I go These people hate on you Deja vu Deja vu uh.